So because we're different, now we right. say, oh, it's because you're Russian. Oh, it's because you're Iranian. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because you're American. Mm -hmm. Versus, oh, it's just you're another human being and your family is another mm -hmm. human being. So what's the best advice we can give to a couple that's getting into an interracial relationship? And maybe it's an interreligious relationship or an intercultural mm. one. I think there's so many differences. It would be great to give some advice to everybody. Um, I, I love that question, Melanie, because I am originally from Brazil. My husband is American. So talking about big differences, I have a, a, a wedding picture with our families. We're all on top of each other and <laughs> hugging. And, and his family, we're just kind of standing. No one, no, there's no touching there. Mm -hmm. But when there's love and their connection, there's so much acceptance of these differences. Mm -hmm. And you start appreciating them. You start noticing and you respect and you appreciate. So really be open and be curious. Like, mm -hmm. how, how come they're different this way? It's interesting. Um, and I respect this. And, and, it's, and I grew up on soccer, talking about sports, and he grew up playing baseball. I knew nothing about baseball. I kind of didn't like it. It kind of seemed boring, mm. but I love it now. So when you kind of fall in love, you are more open to these differences and be curious to, to get to know your partner better. I've always said that, you know, when you marry somebody, you should marry somebody who opens more doors than shuts them. Right. That's great advice. Yeah. And, and I think that it was an intercultural relationship, you know, you really have some tremendous opportunities to learn a lot, but you also have some little pitfalls. I mean, very often when they go into a relationship, they've already decided, okay, we're going to raise our children Catholic rather than mm -hmm. Protestant, or, or okay, we're going to deal with this kind of uh, holiday your way as opposed to my way. It seems to be the little everyday things, the right. subtle little yeah. things mm -hmm. that you haven't decided on before the relationship, you've moved into the relationship that pop up, you know. I just remember once there was a, there was a couple and he was rushing and I don't know what she was, but but the bottom line is their biggest argument was how much sugar to put in the oatmeal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now you don't plan that before your right, wedding day. These yeah. are little things. <laughs> I see a lot of multicultural, multilingual, and multi-religious uh, people who are constantly marrying because I come from Iran and <clears throat> all of this region has been married uh, to different religion and different um, groups right now. One of the things that I've seen is, I think all marriages are multicultural marriages mm -hmm. because I don't care if you marry your neighbor, um, if you marry, it's not good, but just as an example, marry your cousin, your second cousin, it's still from a different culture of the family that they come in. So that openness of getting to know them and uh, you know being open and curious about knowing that it would be great. I just think that we have a name to put on it. So because we're different, now we right. say, oh, it's because you're Russian. Oh, it's because you're Iranian. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's because you're American mm -hmm. versus Oh, it's just you're another human being and your family is another mm -hmm. human being. The other part is that I've noticed it's not just the couple, but it's the whole family system. That the family system has a particular rituals. And if you're going to marry somebody with a different religion or a different culture, you really got to be able to go into that culture and learn it and love it and be that. And blend them, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to give up your culture. And that happens a lot with the multicultural couples is that maybe one partner may push their own traditions and, and those norms and uh, that can create a little bit of the stress. Sure. And listening to the anxiety that, that creates, that is created when there's difference, you know, the dissonance, the distress. You'll know as you're trying to get out on that bridge of connecting and getting to know that person and where they come from and how they're feeling, you'll know when something isn't working, when you've stretched too far. And that anxiety is the signal, I think, that, that okay, this matters. Anxiety sort of tells us that we care mm -hmm. about things. So, you know, especially in intercultural couples, but in any couple, when when we get to a place where we're stretching too far or we feel that anxiety come up, it's important to listen to it mm -hmm. and not just blame it on the other as you're different or fight about it, but to really hear what does this mean? What's my anxiety trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. It sounds like the advice we're offering is very similar to what we would say to any other couple. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your differences, learn about your differences, differences, embrace each other's family, be curious about each other, and, you know, reach out for support if you happen to need it.